In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a schedule in Notion. Using a table database, we'll be combining tasks, routines, and appointments, and using formulas to create some custom columns that will be useful in us tracking our progress. We'll see how best to use a filter option to be able to create custom views, and then finally, turn the table into a timeline view so we can visualize based on different time periods. So let's get started. First, let's go ahead and create a table database. Hit the forward slash on the keyboard, from the menu, select the table inline database. Now let's start filling in all the tasks, routines, and appointments that we want to be able to track as part of this schedule. Now let's create a column which has our start date for all of our tasks, and a column that has the due date for all of our tasks, routines, and appointments. Now let's go ahead and create a number of different columns that we're going to be using with formulas in Notion. So the first one is we'll work out how we'll work out the day of the month. The next column is we'll work out the date of the given week. Then we'll use the formula option to create a custom date field for us, which is a due date with a day in it. Chain that into formula. And then we also need to work out the particular day of the week. So we'll go ahead another add another column in there and change that into a formula and rearrange it. Next, work out the year. And then finally, we'll work out the days remaining as well, which is quite useful in terms of tracking progress. And then we'll create a couple of rag statuses off the back of that. The first we'll create using a formula and the second one we'll use the checkbox option so we can manually set the rag status. Let's go ahead and reduce the width of each of the columns so it fits better on the page. The basic structure of the table is now there. Let's go ahead and populate the start date. So in each case, we'll make the start date the same. So let's make it the 11th of December. Let's give the due date a couple of ranges. So we'll have one happening in the past, then we'll have some happening within the next seven days, and then a few happening beyond the next seven days. Let me put the final table on top now so it's easy to see what we're aiming for. So let's go ahead and start populating the day of the month. So for this purpose, we're gonna be using the date formula so let's go ahead and click that and what this is going to do is it's going to extract the date of the month from the due date that we put in let's go ahead and close the bracket and press done so as you can see the 10th of december is pulled out the 10th number this can be useful if you perform the same task routine or have the same appointment on the same date of each month, you can just filter on this column instead of the overall due date column. Let's go ahead and put in the formula for the date of the week. So in this case, we're gonna select the day formula. And what this does is it basically in Notion assigns a number for each day in the week. So zero is for Sunday, one is for Monday, two is for Tuesday and so on. So let's go ahead and create our formula. So let's go ahead and click on the day function. And once we've done that, we need to select the due date property and then close the brackets and then we'll be done with this particular formula. We can see the numbers have now been populated within the column. So let's go ahead and test that. So we know based on the formula, the number four relates to Thursday. So let's go ahead and see whether the 10th of December was actually on a Thursday. And as you can see there, it is a Thursday. So therefore, we know that the formula is working correctly. So now, based on this number, we can go ahead and work out the day of the week. So we can use the if formula. And we can use this function to spell out the day of the week based on the corresponding numbers that we've just worked out in the previous column. So let's go ahead and select the date of the week property. And let's say if that property is equal to zero, then we want Notion to be able to return the name Sunday. But if that's not true, then we want to basically work through the values of one, two, three, four, five, and assign Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to them. So the easiest way I find is that I just copy the formula that we've just done. And for each additional condition that we want to put in, I simply just paste the same formula in and then just change the zero to one. And then we'll change the Sunday to a Monday. 
and we'll keep on doing this until we've covered the whole week. So let's go ahead and paste the formula again. And now let's change the zero to two this time around. And then instead of Sunday, we'll go ahead and change it to Tuesday. Hopefully you get the hang of it now, but let's carry on with the formula. Let's paste it again. Now change the zero to three this time around. And that will, will correspond to Wednesday. Let's paste it again. Now let's change the zero to a four, and the four is going to be a Thursday. So all the if formula is doing is for every time the condition is not met, it's then asking for another validation. And then if that condition isn't met, then it defaults to the next one and to the next one. And it'll carry on checking this until we close down this formula. And we'll only do that in this case once we've covered off all of the numbers and all of the days of the week that we want to be able to return the value for. So now we've gotten up to six and that's Saturday. So that should cover the whole week. And now we want to close off the formula. So we want to say if none of the conditions above are true, then we want the formula to effectively return a blank. And in that case, we'll just do the inverted commas and inverted commas and then we'll close off the brackets to close off the formula. Oh. Let's go ahead and click done. So it looks more complicated than it is and if we follow it logically step by step and it's much easier to do if formulas. So as you can see, it's now returned the name of the day of the week based on the previous column, which is just a number. And we just check a few of them to make sure that they're actually working correctly. And now let's go ahead and create our custom date, which will be a concatenation of the day of the week that we just worked out plus the due date. So the simplest way to do that is to select the property that we want to feature first. In this case, it's going to be the day of the week. Then we'll do a space bar and then we'll do the plus sign. The plus sign is going to join two different properties together. So in this case, we want to join Thursday or the day of the week with the due date. So let's close off. Now, the reason why this is not working properly at the moment is because the, the due date is a number. So what we want to be able to use is format which is another function and we'll close off the bracket and that will change it into text. So the two text fields now can be joined together. So as you can see, it's now combined the day of the week with the due date. But what we want to do is be able to create a space between the two. So let's go ahead and add two inverted commas with a space in between and then the plus sign. So there you go, that looks a lot better. So the reason why this is useful is because it actually shows you the Thursday name of the name of the day as well. But if you look at the default features or the default functionalities within the date field itself, it doesn't actually allow you to show the day of the week in there. You do have a relative um, date in there that does show you based on today's day whether something was due yesterday, today or next Monday, but nothing quite like the custom date that we've um, just, just created. So again, it's down to preferences. Um, if you do want to be able to look at a date with the day of the week in there, then this is the way you can actually create that. Next up, we'll go ahead and use the year formula to extract the year from the due date. 
Again, this isn't necessary in all cases, but if you do want to be able to pull the year out and use it for any specific um, scheduling purposes, then you can do. So the easiest way to do that is to be able to use the year function. So we'll go ahead and type that and select that. And then we'll just um, select the due date. And what we'll do is we'll just pick out the year that's within the due date. Let's close the brackets and click done. Hopefully that was easy enough to follow. Now the next couple of columns are the most fun columns that we can have when we're doing scheduling templates in Notion. So in this case, we're going to use the date between function. And what that's going to do is based on the due date and the start date, it's effectively going to work out either the number of days, weeks, months, years um, between them. And that depends on the use case, right? So it depends how far apart your due dates are. Obviously, Notion gives you the option of even working it out within minutes and seconds and even milliseconds, but I think that's going to can't really see the use case where you need to do that. But for our purposes, we're just going to be able to I think we'll go ahead and do the number of days. So we'll select the properties. So, so we'll select the due date and then we'll do the start date and then comma and then we want to be able to say days and then we'll close the brackets. So let's go ahead and press done. So as you can see, Notion has automatically returned the number of days between the due date and the start date. And the reason why the first one, the task one is negative one is because the due date is in the past, is one day before. For task three, the due date is three days in advance. Now we could just stick with that, but actually Notion allows us to be able to create sort of red, amber, green statuses. Um, now there's two ways of doing that. One, we could just use the select format column. Um, however, this is a little bit manual and you have to go through it one by one. So let's just go ahead and populate this. So let's say anything that's in the past is going to be a red. Anything that's happening within the next three days is going to be an amber. And then anything beyond um, four days will mark as green because we'll have enough time to be able to complete that task or that routine or the appointment. So let's go ahead and finish this table. Now, a much more cooler way of doing this is to be able to use you guessed it, the if formula again. Mm, yeah, so as, as you can see there is we've just changed the due date to be way ahead in the future and it should be green. But because the select column was manually populated, it doesn't actually change it by itself. So a much better and more efficient way to do this is to use the if formula, like I mentioned. So we'll go ahead and do that. And again, we'll just work out what conditions we want, right? So the ranges that we've talked about is the red, amber, green. So the first thing we'll work out is based on the days remaining. We'll work out the green status first, then we'll give a range to the amber, and then we'll give a range to what is red. So in this case, we wanna make sure that anything that is greater than or equal to four, we wanna give it a green. And then rather than just returning the word green, we'll put in an emoji because Notion allows us to be able to do that. So the way you select the emoji is press um, shift and semicolon on, on your keyboard and it will pop up this menu. So let's go ahead and select three green dots or three green circles in this case. We'll close the bracket. Um, but if this condition isn't meant, then let's copy the formula and put in what we want the amber status to be. So the amber status in this case will be anything that is greater and equal to zero. And let's go ahead and change the green to amber. And then we'll change the emoji to be something that's more 
related to a warning sign. Because if something is going to be happening or is due within the next three days, then we want to be able to easily see it and then be able to act on it. Now let's copy paste the same formula again. But in this case, let's change the range. So we want it to be less than zero. And if that condition is met, then instead of it being green, we want it to be red. And then we'll create a couple of red flags that go alongside that just so that we can visually really tell whether something was due in the past and we missed the deadline. And if none of those conditions are met, we want it to return a blank. Let's go ahead and close off those brackets and let's see what the if formula gives us. Let's press done. So there you have it. That looks visually quite nice. Um, so it tells us straight away whether something is red. And let's go ahead and change the date now again into the future. And as you can see, our if formula statement has changed automatically to green, where it, whereas the manually selected one was still red. So I would definitely, I would definitely recommend using the if statement to be able to work out the red, amber, green statuses when you're doing a schedule in Notion. Now, if you wanted to be able to select a particular range uh, in terms of time period, you can go into the filter option. Um, there's two filter options. One is where you could just add a filter on its own, or you could add a group of filters. In this case, we're just going to be able, we're just going to add a filter and we'll put the filter on the due date. And what Notion allows us to do is be able to select whether we want the due date to be today, tomorrow, yesterday, one week ago, so on and so forth. So it actually gives us a couple of different ranges that we can choose from. Um, and this can be quite, quite useful in many di different use cases um, where you just want to be able to look at the seven week rolling view. You can just do that. So let's go ahead and do that. And then the range we can select is that the due date is on or before one week from now. And once we've selected that, this, this gives us a subset of the tasks that are going to be due within the next seven days only. And then we can see the rack status on that. So this is another clever way of slicing and dicing your data set. The final thing we can do is actually change the same table into a timeline view. And I find this really useful. And this is a new feature that Notion has recently released. And it just visually allows you to be able to manage your time and be able to see whether something's coming up for renewal or not and actually um, again Notion gives you the flexibility of changing the period that you're looking at so you could even go down to hours, days, weeks, bi-weekly, monthly, quarterly or yearly so it just depends on how far into the future your due dates are um, and then you can just set this view So there you go guys, I hope you found that useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.